All right, I know you're looking at the title and thinking I'm crazy. The title might be a bit hyperbolic, I have to admit, but it got you to click on the video, right? Nature of YouTube right there. And you have your mouse over the dislike button, ready to push it at any moment I slip up or don't sound convincing. But come on, I could have made a video on the Astros and their whole scandal. The controversy here is a lot more tame compared to that whole ordeal. Plus, what would I talk about? What new information would I present? John Boy has got that situation covered if you ask me. So if you stick with me, I assure you that I can sway you into believing that Zack Wheeler could be an ace in disguise. Alright, I hope you're on the same page now. So the topic at hand, Zack Wheeler. He's a familiar name in the baseball world. It's not like I'm saying a total unknown as a chance to become an ace. In fact, Wheeler has over half the league interested in his services this offseason. I assume a lot of these teams see what I see, a guy who has played in the mid-rotation his whole career who is a few adjustments away from becoming an anchor of rotation. With that being said, it's my mission to try and convince you guys that Zach Wheeler can be a pitcher at the top of the rotation and be even more successful than he is right now. With that being said, let's get into it. Zach Wheeler has played for the New York Mets for his entire career. In fact, in 2013, he was actually ranked as the number 8 best prospect in the league, above players such as Garrett Cole, Christian Yelich, and Javier Baez. Okay, okay, well, obviously you can't trust prospect lists all the time, but it's just interesting to see. Wheeler has been highly regarded since his days in the minors. On June 18th of that year, he made his Major League debut against the Atlanta Braves. He pitched very well in that game, throwing 6 scoreless innings, allowing only 4 hits, and striking out 7. He had a very solid rookie campaign overall, as he had a 7-5 record and 17 starts, sporting a 3.42 ERA, 84 strikeouts, 104 ERA+, plus, and 4.17 FIP. His problems consisted mainly of throwing too many walks and not enough strikeouts, especially for a guy with the type of stuff he has. I mean, it was his rookie season, so we can give him a break there. He made some improvements in his first full season in 2014. His stats may not necessarily reflect it, but he did make the improvements where it was necessary. He threw less walks per 9 innings and increased his strikeouts per 9 to 9.1. The stat that I want to look at mainly is his FIP. He improved upon this greatly. He had a 3.55 FIP during his first full season. Not everyone may know what FIP is. I can speak for myself that I didn't even know the stat existed until this season. So what is FIP measuring? Well, FIP measures the events that are directly under a pitcher's control, strikeouts, walks, and home runs. From there, a calculation is used to scale these events to a number very similar to the one you'll find for ERA. So it essentially measures a pitcher's performance by disregarding variables that are out of their control, like fielding errors. In 2014, Zach Wheeler had the 35th best FIP in the league. On his own team, only one starter had a better FIP than Wheeler, that was Jacob deGrom. So Mets fielding may have to take some of the blame for Wheeler. But enough of that, let's move to the 2015 season. I just want us to reflect on something. Wheeler has always had the potential to become a top of the rotation starter. It reflected in his prospect ranking just a few years prior. Why has he been considered a mid-rotation starter for basically his whole career? Well, remember a few years ago when we all marveled at the Mets rotation? Harvey, DeGrom, Cologne, upcoming prospects like Noah Syndergaard and Steven Matz? Well, that was 2015, and Wheeler tore his UCL before the season started. People had been speculating before the season how the Mets would perform with this young staff. Well, we never got to see the staff at full strength. By the time Wheeler came back in the 2017 season, Matt Harvey also dealt with injuries that derailed his time in New York. DeGrom and Syndergaard were still very good, so that placed the returning Wheeler towards the back of the rotation as he had not pitched a major league game in two years. Wheeler needed this comeback season. He needed to show the league why he was a top prospect in the first place. He needed to display the promise he had in his first two seasons and improve on that for the future. Unfortunately, he couldn't do that. The season was a disappointment. His season ended early as he was shut down for the season in August for a setback to an injury he suffered the month prior. These are the stats he finished with. Yeah, not pretty. Even his FIP had inflated. However, it's not like he didn't show any promise. From April 12th to June 7th, he had an ERA of 2.91 and a 3.87 FIP, while striking out almost 8 batters per 9. Unfortunately, mid-June was where he really fell off the cliff, which led to the stat line we see today. But this is not where his story ends, this is where it starts. Well, in 2018 in particular. 2018 was a complete turnaround for Wheeler. Just look at his stats. His hits per 9, home runs per 9, walks per 9. ERA, ERA+, Plus, WAR, and WHIP, they all drastically changed. He also had the best FIP of his career, the 12th best in the league. Who had the best? Of course, it was his teammate Jacob deGrom. Wheeler playing second fiddle again. Then we go to this past season. 
His 2019 wasn't bad by any means, but it's a step back from his 2018 season. He allowed a lot more runs and home runs, most home runs allowed of his career, but his FIP was still very good, 16th best in the league to be exact. And when you dig a little deeper, look at his splits between the first and second half of this season. They look like two different pitchers. If I told you to look at these stats not knowing what you know now, and I asked you to name these pitchers, you would probably say something like Jake Arrieta and Max Scherzer but these are actually from the same pitcher. He pitched so much differently in the second half of last season. In fact, if you check the FIP leaderboards and put the starting date as Wheeler's first second half start, July 26th, he moves to 10th in FIP. That's higher than Zach Greinke, Lance Lynn, and Steven Strasburg. But we can't just look at FIP and say that Wheeler is an ace. There are some aspects to his game that need to be tweaked for him to legitimately reach that next level. Throughout Wheeler's whole career, he has always been regarded as having electric stuff. Look at the average speed of his pitches from last season. A 91 miles per hour slider? That's terrifying. And look where he locates his slider. He knows exactly where to throw it. But when you look at his strikeout numbers over the years, he has never passed 200 strikeouts. Of course, the injuries play a part in that, but the most he ever had in a season is 195, which was this past season. I think I have found some reasons as to why Zach Wheeler does not get the amount of strikeouts he should be getting. The article that inspired me to make this video, Zach Wheeler is good, but not as good as he could be, by Ben Clemens of Fangraphs, he makes some great observations of specific tendencies that Wheeler has, specifically on two strike counts. When a pitcher wants to throw a fastball on a two strike count, you would expect them to throw it high in the zone to force the batter to chase it. On a two strike count, a batter is trying to get any piece of contact they get. They're a defensive at the plate. An off speed pitch will keep them off balance, but sometimes a pitcher will throw a fastball instead to try and blow it past the hitter. The problem in Wheeler's case is that on two strike counts, he throws the majority of his fastballs down the middle of the plate, right in the player's hitting zone. Between 2018 and 2019, batters had a much easier time hitting Wheeler's fastballs in 2019 compared to 2018, as shown in the batting averages, 236 in 2018 and 276 in 2019. Compare that with the batting averages of his most used off-speed pitches, you see that he should rely on his off-speed more often. He also threw more fastballs on two strike counts in 2019 than in 2018. This explains why his ERA went up this past season. His Ks per 9 stayed roughly the same as 2018, so if he makes the adjustments necessary to pinpoint his fastball, and utilizes his off-speed pitches more often, theoretically he should be getting more strikeouts and allowing less runs. Let's make some comparisons between Wheeler and pitchers who throw fastballs around the same speed as him. Look at these pitchers and where they locate their fastball on two strike counts. All of them throw the fastball much higher in the zone than Zach Wheeler on two strike counts. Also, apart from Garrett Cole, all of these pitchers threw less fastballs on two strike counts than Wheeler, meaning they rely on their off-speed pitches more on strikeout counts. Let's also compare the splits of hitters on two strike counts versus these pitchers. In 2019 for Wheeler, hitters hit a line of 179, 229, and 292 on two strike counts. That seems really good, but when you compare that to the other pitchers, you see the differences. Also, when you look at the strikeout leaderboards, the majority of them throw a slower fastball than Wheeler but have many more strikeouts. Why? Because they can pinpoint where to throw that fastball. It's not hard you throw the fastball, it's where you place it. So really, Wheeler has the stuff. I mean, come on, he throws a slider at 91 miles per hour and a change of at 89 miles per hour. He needs to throw his fastball away from the middle of the zone and rely on his fastball less in general. He has great off-speed pitches that he should really utilize more. One more thing about his fastball since we're on the topic, the velocity of his fastball ranks in the 94th percentile, but the spin rate rate ranks only in the 59th percentile. Now, if you haven't seen my Garrett Cole video, it was my most recent video, so check it out. Cole has noticeably raised the spin rate of his fastball since joining Houston, and has become the strikeout king of the MLB. So that's something to think about for Wheeler and whatever team he signs with. And there you have it. There is my case of how Zach Wheeler can become an ace at the price of only $100 million. Of course, $100 million is a lot of money to invest in a player, but for a guy that will anchor your rotation, you would be very lucky to be only paying that much to a free agent. And by the way, this $100 million figure, that's the main estimate I've been seeing for what kind of contract he's going to get, around the 5 year, $100 million range. And speaking of this free agent class, who could you compare Wheeler to? Well, arguably the two best free agents this year, Garrett Cole and Steven Strasburg. I don't mean comparing them in terms of success. 
I mean comparing them in terms of career arc. All three of them were top prospects with lots of hype around their potentials. All of them have similar stuff, the difference is that we have seen what Cole and Strasburg have become since improving their game. They have already made the adjustments to live up to the hype they had as prospects and turn into aces. Strasburg had his fair share of injury problems like Wheeler, but he adjusted, and now he is one of the most sought after signatures of the offseason. In this video I am pointing out the adjustments that Wheeler needs to make. He hasn't made those adjustments yet, he hasn't reached his full potential like Strasburg and Cole presumably have. And I think with these adjustments, he can reach that ace potential he once had, for a fraction of the price that Cole and Strasburg will command. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, thanks for watching.